Labour Party anti-Semitism. Recent headlines making that allegation are probably the last thing a political movement that prides itself on fighting prejudice wants to see. Yet Labour is now investigating one of its councillors in Surrey and the Oxford Labour Club. Lord Levy, a prominent fundraiser and peer, has reportedly threatened to quit the party unless it does more to condemn anti-Semitism. This week, Tom Harris, a former minister, said the party was becoming more anti-Semitic and blamed the hostility towards Israel espoused by some left-wingers who've come to prominence since Jeremy Corbyn was elected leader. Our reporter Andrew Hoskin has been investigating. Brent Street in Hendon has been bustling today with Jewish people buying provisions for tonight's supper, marking the start of the Sabbath, whether it's bagels or even chicken from the local kosher butchers to make soup out of. Here in the North London borough of Barnet, nearly 15% of the population are Jews, one of the highest concentrations of Jewish people anywhere in the UK. It's the Jewish Sabbath, we call it the Shabbat, and it's when our community first of all gets things together for the Friday meal. Mark Gardner works for the Community Security Trust or CST, a charity based in Hendon that works with the police among others to protect Jewish communities across the UK. During 2015 the CST recorded 924 anti-Semitic incidents, the third highest total it's ever documented. The charity's always been aware just how emotions over Israel and the plight of the Palestinians can spill over into anti-Semitism. Mark Gardner believes there's a danger of that happening within Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn has strongly condemned anti-Semitism and people accept that he is no anti-Semite. But what does he mean by anti-Semitism and how do most Jewish people perceive anti-Semitism? And I think it's the distance between those two understandings that gets to the heart of the current problem. For the Jewish community to have the trust that it wants to have in the leadership of the Labour Party at the moment, those leaders need to come out and be more explicit in what they mean by saying we condemn anti-Semitism. They need to specify that they mean contemporary anti-Semitism and not its 1930s variant. Anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, far-right racism is totally wrong and absolutely obnoxious. Jeremy Corbyn has publicly emphasised his detestation of anti-Semitism, just as he did last year on The World at One during his election campaign. But a number of Labour MPs say that the issue of anti-Semitism has come more to the fore since Mr Corbyn became party leader last September. Angela Smith is Labour MP for Peniston and Stocksbridge in South Yorkshire. I think it's a problem that has existed for some time and it's come to the fore now. So, if you like, it's a problem that has not suddenly emerged. It's just become more obvious. And I think it's related to an attitude, if you like, on the part of some in the party towards the whole Israel-Palestine issue. And I think over the years, too many people have started to equate every aspect of Jewish identity and culture with the politics of Israel and the Middle East. And that is just unacceptable and it's becoming a real problem. They've broken goodness knows how many UN resolutions. So why, why, why are we still allowing trade to go on between Europe and Israel? Why? Jeremy Corbyn has been a staunch critic of Israel particularly during the so-called Rage Against Israel protest in London in June 2010, organised in part by the Stop the War Coalition, an organisation which he once chaired. No one is accusing Mr Corbyn of being anti-Semitic, but some commentators believe that the left does have issues, particularly when it comes to Israel. Jonathan Friedland is a columnist with both The Guardian and The Jewish Chronicle and believes that the left has long had a historic problem with anti-Semitism. The Labour Party and the left have a peculiar vulnerability to this prejudice unlike any other because it appears to be, dresses up as, a campaign against the overdog rather than the underdog. That's why in the 19th century it was called the socialism of fools because it's a kind of foolish, deluded socialism that thinks it's fighting for equality by tearing down Jews who are somehow depicted as more powerful. You know, that has been a road Europe and others have gone down before and it ended very, very badly. And uh, Jeremy Corbyn needs to be alert to that history. Labour's currently holding at least two separate inquiries following complaints about anti-Semitism, one into the Oxford University Labour Club and another into a local councillor accused of tweeting anti-Jewish comments.
But supporters of Jeremy Corbyn say that some of these incidents actually occurred before Mr Corbyn became leader. John Lansman, himself Jewish, is a long-term supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, as well as being chairman of the largely grassroots Momentum Movement, which played such an important role in Mr Corbyn's leadership victory. I really haven't seen any evidence that the Corbyn surge, if you want to call that, has brought more of a problem in with it. I go around the country talking to momentum meetings and there are a lot of young people who've never been in political parties before who've grown up with a really strong anti-racist philosophy. But I do appreciate that you know, there is widespread concern in the Jewish community.